artificial technology, then research workers, then uh, faculty members from the various reputed institutes and all others. So we are today in webinar, we are going to cover the imagine uh, workflow in photography and imagine UV workflow. So as you photography is a very popular technology and has its earliest origin in surveillance and recognition. And this photography from this photography, we can easily uh, get the 3D data uh, elevation data in the 3D environment, followed by the ortho mosaic images also. So once we'll generate that ortho mosaic images, uh, then we can fit this into the advanced mapping and surveying software to create the measurable 3D maps and renderings. And comparing differences in data over time can tease out various and variation in different environment factor. And the important is that this all can be done without putting your boots on the ground. Similarly, also we'll be talking about the UAV. Now these are as today's agenda where we'll start with the brief introduction about the hexagon. Then we'll be talking about our photogrammetry. In this session, we'll be cover the different workflow of the photography like aerial triangulation, high resolution dame generation, terrain editing, orthophoto, and so on. Then we'll be talking about the UAV processes, where we'll be covering the UAV workflow, UAV processes, DAME in studio environment, followed by the industry uses of the photogrammetry and UAV technologies. And lastly, we'll attend the Q&A session, where we will try to answer all the questions of yours. Now to start with hexagon, what is hexagon at a glance? So basically we are the global leader in information technology with our main focus in the geospatial and industrial enterprise solutions. We have a very strong presence in the global in almost 50 countries with more than 24,000 of employees. And we are attached with various different or as uh, various prestigious projects and we catered or served the various uh, wide range of industries also. And our main focus in the research and development, we invest almost 10 to 12 percent revenue every year in the research and development. Our main is, aim is to innovate the new new technology to cater the industry in a better fashion in a better way. And to do so, our 5000 employees are working in the research and development department and when we are talking about the patents, over 3,700 active patents are there in our head. We have a strong, very strong financial background of 5.2 billion euro. Then we acquire a lot of leading technologies like Eldas, a famous flagship software, Leica for uh, uh, surveying tool, Intergraph flagship, again another flagship so, uh, sort of software, then Luciat GPUA software, and we are providing solutions for enterprise GIS, cloud based GIS, public safety solutions, and utilities. So, so also, when we are talking about the our presence in the India, we have a very strong presence in the pan India of almost 14 uh, office, uh, almost uh, offices in all 14 cities, which is controlled again controlled by our head office located in Gurgaon. We have regional sales offices in almost all major cities. And we are the first OEM company who was having a research and development center in Hyderabad and Pune. And we have over 2000 Indian employees who are day and out working to cater the best to best solution to our Indian industry with a strong sales, technical development and techno commercial expert to serve our customer. In a way, we have a very strong presence in the India as well across the globe. Now, as I have told earlier that we are attached with different industry, so we are there in the smart uh, cities and nations, transportation and port management, also very core specific GIS application like forestry, water, agriculture and power. Also, we are there in the safety and security and we have a very strong footprint to our Indian, one of the prestige in Indian customer that is the defense. Now, in geospatial industry have facing a challenge in the geop challenges. Now, what is geop challenges? Basically, geop stands for the geospatial and the operational world. If you look at into the uh, left side, these are the static environment or these are the data producing agencies. 
with the help of geospatial environment, GIS environment, photogrammetry environment, remote sensing, remote sensing or surveying. On, but on the right side, they are the action taker or they are the dynamic agent. So they always want the data in the now custard format. But the gap is always there. So like nowadays, GIS data has been prepared in a different silos, like Survey of India doing their own maps, then various agencies are created map, but these maps are not available in the real time format or which are actual for actual use. Or you can say these are not available for real time for the different verticals like transportation authority, aviation, defense, railways, etc. So to zeroing the gap, what we propose a solution which connect the information and connect the application to the user specific. Moreover, all of our cloud enabled enterprise platform provides the kind of analytics dynamic dashboards with the help of these data. So which will cater the answer to the accent takers or to the different dynamic industries. Again, these are on the right side. These are our valuable customers like 112 UP, then dial 100, then NSDI, ISRO, then uh, Mahajenko. So we are attached with these are all our various prestigious customers. Then again, uh, these are the various prestigious mission mode projects under the government using geospatial technology. And the aim of these projects is that using technology for improved provisioning of the judicial services to the citizens. And we are involved with these prestigious projects as some of their solutions provided. Of course, in some of the projects we involve directly and in some of where we involve through our prestigious MSI, who are the integrator all of various needs and various components like these projects, uh, Naomi Gange, Bharat Mala, Swabhamita Scheme, Digital India, Delhi Metro, all those things. And where we are working day and out to cater their needs or their aim. So some of these projects are under state government and some of the projects are under central government. So we are there everywhere with these mission mode projects. Now we'll, we'll be talking about our portfolio. So our portfolio broadly vertically categorized into the three sections. That is the power portfolio, Lucid portfolio and MF portfolio. Now, if we are talking about the power portfolio, again, power portfolio segmented into the producer suit, provider suit, and platform suit. So basically, these are the conventional software where process data can be produced or processing of data. Now, when we will be talking about the Lucio portfolio, it basically provides the library to develop real-time situation awareness applications. So it wide range of uses are there in the defense aviation sector where lot of lot of data are coming dynamic data are coming in and, and the action has to taken on the runtime. So in their Lucia the light speeds are there, C pillars are there, RIA, they are fusions there. So these all are comes under the Lucia portfolio. And when we are talking about the MF portfolio, this portfolio utilize these data and providing the capability to configure various types of applications. It can be real uh, rich client application or it can be a browse based or it can be geo processing. So these are our total portfolio. And again, if you go to the next slide in the where we'll detailedly elaborate the power portfolio. So as I have said that power portfolio again divided into three part that is the producer suit, provided suit and platform suit. In the producer suit, allows user to collect, process, analyze and ge geospatial data so that they can produce meaningful insights with the help of the LDAS imaging for the rust, for the imaging purpose, then uh, geomedia suit of software for GIS environment, imaging photogrammetry and UVs are there. So once these data are provided, that then become it comes to the provider suit, which offered the tool for compressing, organizing and streaming geospatial data. Basically, we have the LDAS Apollo through that server. We can manage or cataloging our data as a central repository, and from there we can disseminate the data as and when required. Then we'll be talking about the platform suit. As the name itself coined, it provides the platform to create, share the information that to the end user. 
which can be view or interact with the using web or mobile devices. So these were um, uh, GeoMedia web map, GeoMedia smart client, GeoMedia mobiles are there to cater the functionality of the platform suit. Now, <clears throat> these are our offerings of remote sensing for educational portfolio. So which starts with the Erdas Imagine Professional. As we all ever about this, a very um, world famous flagstick software, which will be used for the spatial model to build spatial recipe, uh, multi spectral image classification, header spectral image, all those, and point cloud data, and so on. On top of that, we can use the add on as Imagine Expansion, which will be used for again used for the auto sync for image to image code station, visualization and analysis as a virtual GIS. Then we we have the Delta Q for which be, wizard base change detection, then ortho radars for ortho rectification radar data, NIFT support and so on. Also, we have the LDAS ER mapper for the uh, high image com processing and compression capability for the oil, gas and mineral industry. Then we have the imagine photogrammetry, Imagine photogrammetry where triangulation, ortho rectification, ortho mosaic process can be done, which will be covered in the photogrammetry section. Then we have the Imagine DSM extractor through which in the photogrammetric environment we can generate the point cloud data with the by using advanced semi-global matching. Then anybody wants to edit his terrain in the photogrammetry environment, then for that Imagine terrain editor is also there. So with the help of Imagine terrain editor, one can perform the editor editing of the terrain. So again, these are the our offerings for the GIS for the education products like GeoMedia Professional is a world famous GIS software where you will can perform grid analysis, data fusion, transaction management, public work management and parcel management. And as I add in, GeoMedia Transportation Manager is also there, which will help you to for routing and linear referencing system. Then uh, GeoMedia Motion Video Analyst are also there, which will analyze the motion video taken from the UAV and other video also in, uh, can be done, analysis can be done. Then advanced feature collections are also there for feature trophographer. So these are all our offerings in the for GIS environment. <clears throat> so <clears throat> after that, We'll come to the uh, going to next slide. So this is our now we'll come to the photogrammetry section. So we'll start with the photogrammetry section and this session will be covered by my colleague, Mr. Reddy. So now I will hand over the session to Reddy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chanchal. Uh, welcome to all. Uh, this webinar sessions will gain your knowledge uh, by attending these kind of webinar sessions uh, and uh, today I'm going to explain about photogrammetry and what is photogrammetry and what are the process flows are there in the photogrammetry. First, we need to understand what is photogrammetry, why the word came from photogrammetry. Photogrammetry means photo, photo is nothing but a light where we can capture the images and uh, gram, gram, gram means uh, it's a future. Uh, then the word came from Greek and uh, uh, metry means measurement. So the complete uh, Name of the photogrammetry is uh, to cap to measure the features in the photo, okay, with uh, in a 3D environment mode. So only in photogrammetry we can measure the features in 3D environment mode, and it is mainly used in like in architecture, mapping, engineering, and planning departments will use in the photo. Uh, they are, will use the photogrammetries, and various kind of images can use in photogrammetry like. Uh, Satellite imagery, aerial imagery, and drone imagery. Also, all these three images can use uh, in a photogrammetry, which is which which is enable the stereos. Okay, and and this software has automatic technology to detect uh, control points or uh, tie points to match the both the uh, both the images. It's nothing but a georeferencing of both the images and where we can get the accurate 3D constructions. Okay. And what the output of the photogrammetry? Generally, the output of the photogrammetry is a digital elevation model, a digital terrain model, or a digital uh, surface model, and uh, contours are the imageries and 3D structures models. And in what kind of applications we will use this photogrammetry? Like digital twin models. Now most of the industries they are using uh, digital twin models and the surveying of landscapes, 
and creation of 3D models of uh, heritage uh, sites or heritage buildings. Uh, because if there is no 3D model of heritage buildings, if the building has destroyed or damaged, so we don't know how to again reconstruct that building. We have that 3D kind of model, then it is easy to reconstruct. So these all things can do in photogrammetry. And what are the key functionalities in IDAS Imagine and as well as in photogrammetry and Imagine UAE? So generally when come to IDAS Imagine, there are the uh, most of the key functionalities are image processing, georeferencing where we can match the images, image analysis to read the analysis and the data management and 3D visualization like a virtual world, we can create a virtual world. Image fusion means like it's nothing but a resolution match which majorly we can use in satellite imagery. Automated feature extraction where we can extract features automatically by using uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning and remote sensing workflows. Then when come to photogrammetry, aerial triangulation, I, which, which is the most important task and point cloud generation is nothing but digital elevation model or digital terrain model and ortho rectification. Then dense image matching, feature extraction in 3D, where in photogrammetry only we can extract the features in 3D. In any other uh, modes we cannot extract, we require a photogrammetry to extract the feature in 3D. And it supports multi-sensor processing images like uh, satellite, drone, or uh, UAV, and aerial, man, uh, aerial uh, manned uh, crafts. And when come to imagine UAV, there is automated workflows and convert, we can convert the project file into a photogrammetry block file, then we can view and edit in 3Ds. And this is the typical workflow of photogrammetry. So to, uh, to create a photogrammetry project, we require the stereo imageries, that is the important task. Maybe it may be aerial or uh, UAV or satellite. So the imagery should be a stereo pair. Then we require the RPCs, Generally, when come to satellite imagery, it called as a RPC values. When come to aerial imagery, we will call it as a interior orientation. Then finally, we require the ground control points. These three are the inputs required to create a one project, photogrammetry project. First, we have to collect the photographs. Then we have to collect the GCPs. Then next task by using both this, we have to create a aerial triangulation where we can create a 3D model and where we can uh, uh, then by using that 3D model, then we have to generate the DEM and we can edit the DEM in uh, uh, 3D model because the just creation of gen will not give a very accurate when we require a very accurate digital terrain model or digital surface model. We have to edit that DEM. So for that, we require the photogrammetry project. Then finally, by using digital terrain model, we can generate the ortho generations and the individual are those generations are the replication imagery. We can create a single mosaic. It's nothing but a mosaic or match. Then we are talking about aerial triangulation. Aerial triangulation, not, nothing but to triangulate the project. And for to create an uh, aerial triangulation, what, what process we have to involve? First, we have to load our imageries. Then we have to collect the tribe tie points. Then we have to collect the ground control points. Then we have to adjust the block. And this is the process flow of aerial triangulation. First, we have to create a block file. Then we have to type because there are so many sensors are there and so many cameras are there. So we have to select the type of camera, what type of camera we are using to create a block file. That is very important. Then we have to select the RPC type or IO types and we have to Assign the projection system. There are so many projection systems in the world like UTM, WGS, and GCS. There are so, and uh, defense coordinate system. There are so many projection systems are there. Projection system is very, very important while creating a project file. Otherwise, our entire data is going to be wrong. Then we have to uh, add our stereo imagery. Then we have to add the RPCs. Then once we create the aerial triangulation by using that, uh, we have to collect the GCPs, then finally block, bundle block adjustment is nothing but a triangulate our block file to make more accurate. Then finally we have to save our block file. And this is the sample uh, uh, presentation, how we have to create a new block file to create for a photogrammetry project. First we have to select our camera. Then we want to select the 
RPC, then we have to select the type of sensor and uh, type of uh, RPC. Next, we have to create our pro projection system. Then finally, we have to add our imagery. After adding the imagery, we have to add our RPCs to concerned imagery like our IOS or RPCs, which has a projection system and as well as a, a, a location referencing system. So by using both, it, it locates to the exact location. Then we have to create our interior orientation and we have to measure the points. Here we have, we have an option called uh, automatic tie point generation where we can collect the tie points, means where we can match, stitch the both images, both the stereo images by using in a uh, Edas photogrammetry, imagine photogrammetry, we can uh, automatically match the points uh, uh, and we can create uh, our RMS error. And this is the option called to measure manual points. Initially, I have told how to create the automatic points. If automatic points are not generated properly, there is where we have to place manually, we can create a manual point. And after that, if you want to create a GCPs, we have to finally we have to capture the GCPs. So we have an option called we can import the GCPs automatically into our block file. So where it automatically import to in our block file. So once it is imported, then we have to read the points. We have to, it will almost it will all these GCPs will place at the exact location where the GCPs come from DGPS, which is very high accurate. So you can see here full control. Full control is nothing but a GCP. None tie is nothing but a tie point. Tie point is matching of both the imageries. And GCPs is nothing but our block file to adjust to our ground, exact location. So, so almost it, has, it will place nearest to the location. By using the photographs, we have to move, we have to just adjust these GCPs to the exact location. And the triangle, uh, uh, yellow triangles are called control points, and uh, sorry, green triangles are controls, and the green squares are called tie points. So finally, we have to do the RMSA calculation like black bun bundle adjustment. Then once we have created a, I have created a block file. Then now we have to generate the dem by using that block file. So we have a stereo pair imagery. With the help of that, we can generate a digital elevation model or digital terrain model or digital surface model. For that, we require the stereo imagery and as well as block file. So once we generate the, our uh, dem, this is the process for how can we generate the dem. We have an option called automatic terrain extraction. By using this automatic terrain extraction, we can generate our dem automatically. Here, there is an output type options are there. There are like dem, 3D shape, ASCII, and LTF. So as per our requirement, we can uh, select the output. And here we can select the, our uh, cell size means resolution of our dem. Then if we require more accurate, if our dem required more accurate, and then we have to select our GCP uh, points and as well as block points, block type points, it generates by considering with those points, our dem will generate more accurately. Then finally, we have to run the project. Then automatically, it will generate the elevation model, digital elevation model automatically. Then finally, now I generated the digital elevation model automatically. So there will be a, some error. So now I want to rectify those errors. So for that, I am. We have to use 3D more, uh, 3D editor, terrain editor, where we can edit our uh, digital elevation model. This digital elevation model we can fit to the ground properly because all the digital when coming to a digital terrain model, terrain means the data should fit to the ground. All the data, all these points should be fit to the ground. So there is a terrainator. By using terrainator, we can uh, adjust our dem by using brake lines, where brake lines will helpful to uh, create a, our dem more accurate. So by creating dem, we can uh, you can see the contour dynamically contour will changes. So there is an option called uh, dynamic. It will automatically change whenever there is a edit is happening. So automatically the contour will change. Now here the contour is passing into the water. Generally, as per 
remote sensing works the water the counter should not passes through the water because water is a stagnant means stagnant means the all the height should be the same so when the height is same the counter should not passes and you can see here all the points are sitting on the building so by using area tool all the points we can fit to the ground when we want to create a digital terrain model all the data should be fit to the ground it should not be on the tree or on the buildings so when we want to create a digital surface model then it should be like the point is on the building it should be on the building the point is on the tree it should be on the tree when we want to create a digital terrain model all the points should be fitted to the ground then we have to do the ortho rectification why should we do the ortho rectification why can't we use directly the photos which came from sensors or cameras because the photo photo is a plain paper we will consider as the photo is a plain paper so the but our earth is not a plain all we you know the our earth is not a plain our earth is undulation so so for that we have to create a elevation data by using our raw imagery stereo imagery and elevation data we have to rectify our photograph as per our ground so you can see here there is a raw imagery it's like a plain paper and this is our digital terrain model which represents to our earth it represents our terrain and finally this is our ortho it has rectified ortho it look like our earth it is undulated as per exact to our earth and where it matches exact to our ground coordinates and by using this we can measure the features we can capture the features we can draw the features and this is the process flow of ortho photo rectification where we have to add our block file then there is a option called dtm source where we have to attach our dtm file as a input so then finally we have to run run the process then finally we can get the ortho of that particular imagery so now we we got several number of images now i have a 100 photos are there i have created the dem and i have created ortho rectification of 100 images now i want to make it a single image because by using 100 images it not be handy and it is difficult to use so now i want to make it a single it is called ortho mosaic ortho mosaic is nothing but to merge images to merge multiple images into single so for ortho mosaic we required inputs all the our ortho rectified images are our inputs so for while creating a mosaic imagery mosaic we have to create the scene line first we had we have to add all our images okay now this i have added some four images now we have to create the scene line creation the software has a automatic generate scene line creation where it can generate scene line automatically where there is a overlap imagery where it creates the scene line to seamless mosaic because when we want to see the image it look like a single it look like a single seamless image it should not be a, like a uh, it should not like different different colors it should not look like that like. so for that we have to create a seam line then if you want to edit the seam line you can see here because this is one photograph and this is one photograph generally in between the photograph there will be a small uh, angle adjustment uh, angle uh, due to that small angle you can see the small displacement happen between the two images to avoid this kind of issues we have to edit our seam line to make fit all the building into a single image so it look like a seamless building then there is a option called color correction so because while taking the photographs sometimes they will take the photographs on morning sometimes they will take the photographs on uh, afternoon and there will be some cloudy so while taking the photograph the photographs will come in some different different colors some photos will be dim some photos will be a bright so some photos will be a hazy so to avoid this kind of issues to make it a seamless mosaic so there is a color correction option where it will do automatically correct color corrections and after running the process then we can get a single mosaic image where there are four images now it mosaic into a single image and all four images look like a single color it's a seamless mosaic it's called a seamless mosaic uh this about unmanned aerial ve vehicle it's uh, uav drones mr chenchal will uh, continue from here
Thanks, Reddy. Really, yeah. it was a very insightful session. So I will be covering the UAV as well as the industrial use cases of photogrammetry and UAV session. OK, so UAV, as Reddy said, is uh, going to the next slide. UAV, UAV is the unmanned aerial vehicle or it's a very small aircraft or instrument that carries no human pilot and can be fully or partially autonomous, but are more, more often controlled remotely by a human. Basically, it uses to monitor the location of the potential hazards and mod notify the relevant authorities if threatening conditions are there or detected. And nowadays, it has a wide range of uh, uses are there. Basically, because of it acquires the quality of aerial images, precisions are there, easily deployable, securities are there, and safety is there. So all these, because of all these reasons, we are nowadays, the usage of UAV is increasing day by day. So <clears throat> these are the different applications where UAVs are frequently deployable, like water resources, coastal monitoring, coastline monitoring, volcano movement of the volcanoes, volcanic eruptions, debris flows, landslide, then mining activity, waterways. So all this comes under the environmental engineering and geology for where we have deployed the UAV applications are there. Then if you are talking about the engineering and infrastructure, their building and infrastructures are there where we use the UAV, violent gases are there. Then for agronomy and forestry, crop analysis and forestry cases also using UAV, in especially in the forest cases where there is a tracking of uh, wild animal is required, where human reaches is not possible. In that case also, we can use the UAV data to track the movement of the wild animal. Then computer for computer graphics and visual reality as a surface restructure, reconstruction of outer door, outdoor or indoor scenes are also uh, cases also used for the UAV. So these are the different fields where UV can be used. Now we are talking about the Imagine UV workflow. Now what is Imagine UV? Imagine UV is a software to process the drone data. So with the help of Imagine UV, you can process your drone data and the process workflow is very simple. Once you acquire the data, you keep the, all the data and with the as an input and with minimum orientation, you will get the output as a point cloud, DSM, elevation data and orthomosaic data. And for further processing through the server, you can crawl those data and you can publish as a web service for the future use or other way. Or other way, it, it's done in a very simple way. How it can be done like you just select the data folder then choose the processing option and select the output folder. Then you run the process and relax. You will get the preview process and batch processing as for the output. Now, what are the key features of Imagine UAV? Now, the uh, key Imagine UAV works with any type of drones, whether it's freak drone or rotary drone. It can works with any types of drone. Then it supports the compressed data as input. Also, it supports the compressed data as an output also because when you are processing drone data as a orthomosaic data, it may be a huge of volume. So you can compress those data output in ECW format also. It will help you to manage the store management. Then you can easily handling of orientation data with minimum of orientation parameters. You can get the output or you can run the imagine workflow process. Then improved interfaces are there where for dim data or mosaic data you can choose or specify the resolutions also. Then it support the rotation angle omega phi kappa. Then re you can define the output projects also. You can reproject your outputs also. Now if you look at in the right side, this is the simple interface of the imagine your flow where you have to provide the input folders and the your inputs may be in JPG format, in BMP format, or in PNG format. All will be captured through wildcard character, and all will be in, uh, taken as an input through the wildcard character. Then you have to provide the minimum surface uh, quality. There are different surface qualities that they are like low, medium, high, very high. So uh, changing upon the uh, surface quality, it will increase the volume of your outputs. 
Even you can specify the output uh, projection in terms of EPSG code. EPSG is co code is nothing but the European Petroleum Survey Group, which define the code against the projection. Like we are giving here 4326. 4326 is nothing but the, it's depicted the geographic projection. So in this way, you can define the uh, UAV process and get the outputs. Going to next, so these are the different outputs like ortho mosaic images, then raster DM, DSM, then point cloud data. You will get the ortho mosaic data, and I have zoomed in a particular position where you will get your crystal clear images with a two to five centimeter resolution data based on your input data. And similarly, once you will get the input data as a point cloud data, you can open those point cloud data on Eldas Imagine in 2D, in 2D and 3D as well as for doing further analysis. So these are the different outputs from you will get from the uh, drone data by using Imagine UV software, which sits on top of the Eldas from Eldas Imagine. Then. The beauty of the uh, Imagine UV is that once you perform in UAV environment, then you can bot that file into the photogrammetric environment also for DAME editing in the stereo environment. So in the next slide, see once you perform the UAV functionalities, then it's very simple steps. Just you have to click on the UAV export block file export and by clicking that option, you can export that BLK file, which is nothing but the block file, which hold all the information, the photogrammetry environment. And you could you can once you export that BLK file, you can open that block file in the photogrammetry environment. So when you uh, open that BLK in the photogrammetry environment, it will open like that with all the photographs and all the pair models. And all this, and if you look at in the below bar, it will show what are the process already done, marked by the green light, and what are the pending is marked by the red lights. Even if one can uh, edit the terrain, and <clears throat> in the in the next slide, if we, if anyone wants to edit the terrain or wants to capture the thing, that also possible with the help of photogrammetric terrain editor. So. All these processes, once you've done in the UAV, that can be brought into the environment where you can done all the photogrammetric workflow also. The data remains same. So with the help of drone data, will you can capture the data as well. You can edit the terrain also. This is another piece of uh, weird that is the spatial modular. With the help of spatial modular, First of all, what is spatial modular? Spatial model is nothing but a canvas where so many interconnecting operators are there. And with just you have to provide the inputs and after providing the inputs within a couple of minutes or so, it will give you the output. And the best thing is that you can reuse in in number of times with changing inputs and you will get the different outputs. So by using this two, uh, two vintages uh, UAV data or to you can calculate the volume changes also. See if we provide the recent query point cloud data, and we also provide the baseline query point cloud data in as a, a point cloud input too. So from there, it will calculate the volume changes, which will help you to calculate the whatever the changes in the stockpiling. So it is a very a, important by using a spatial model, you can do also UV data analysis. Now we'll come to the industrial use cases. So basically, we'll uh, describe some of the cases where photogrammetry and UV technology used for the industry, like mining and querying. Photogrammetry can be used to create the 3D models for mining and queries, for optimizing mining plan also, then to ensure the safety regulation in the mining area, process progress of mining operations, and then volumetric analysis also can be done where you can define the cartel fin analysis so through cartel fin analysis you can do the volumetric analysis in the mines area also then we'll go to the change analysis in the mine area so see inspections of mine activities like mine planning optimized site development stockpiling inventory so all this can be done with the help of uh, using photogrammetry technology as well as the uv technology now in the next slide, if we want to see the whatever the illegal mining happened outside the of out, out outside the official allotted mining boundary. So if we see the Agucha mine is the Indian mines 
where we have taken the Cartosat image of 2006. In that area, 3000 acre, which is marked by the pink color, is the official boundary which is allotted to the tenant or lessee. But beyond that, they have start illegal mining, which is of 32 acres. And if you see in the next vintages of image, which is of November 13, that illegal mine ex uh, extended up to 42 instead of 30. They are now extended up to 42. Even they have started in the northeast direction, also 25 acres and 23 acres. So comparing two vintages images, we can understand that this much area they have excavated as illegal mines. Even if we look at into the next vintage of image that is of March 2015, the area becomes same. So from there, one can easily understand the how much illegal mining they can excavate it. And so in this way, it will enhance the um, uh, uh, mine authority to judge whether how much illegal mines happen and it will increase the revenue to the department also. Now, this is another extended use of urban applications where once you will define the change detection using ortho mosaic and images and old images, then for first distribution, you can publish those as a web services. And once you will publish those web services, then can be used as a GIS data for updating using changes, infra and road audits, then stormwater drainage. You can monitor the stormwater drainages for 3D visualization. So all this can be done under the urban application using these technologies. Now for construction site also, we can use this technology like to plan and monitor the construction project, any safety for any potential safety hazards, then whether construction sites are proceeding according to the plan or not, whether illegal constructions are going or not. So all this can be detected or uh, using the drone technology or photogrammetry technology. Even site suitability and feasibility also done with using this technology. Then comes to the architecture and engineering where photogrammetry process can be used for 3D modeling of buildings and structures and these plans and design renovation addition. These all be done with the help of this uh, photogrammetry techniques. Even architects mainly use drones for generating photogrammetric, uh, sorry, photographic view and developing their projects from the particular angle. Also drone can be used for throughout the construction site to how the construction site are building on. So this can be both the technologies can be used in the architecture as well as the engineering sites also. Then for mapping and surveying purpose, once in the for, for the photogrammetric process, once you generate the ortho mosaic uh, photos from the photogrammetry process, then you can use those to create the high resolution maps and survey data which will again use for the optimized transportation route, monitoring changes in the environment and plan for manage the land and use. So in mapping and surveying industry also photogrammetry can be used. Now in the agriculture industry, it is very helpful the drone data monitoring the crop health and growth then optimizing irrig irrigation and fertilizer, then identify, identifying the potential problem areas, water set management, water resource management also. Even photogrammetry techniques can also be used for pieces and farming as it allows obtaining information from the uh, land of three dimensionals. So one can easily by using this drone technology as well as photogrammetry technology, very much uh, in, in improved the technology can be used for the agricultural monitoring. So again, uh, for uh, oil and gas exploration in the oil and gas exploration, pipelines for pipelines planning, plan for optimizing drilling operation, monitoring process, pipeline lanes. So all these activities, the drone technology can be used for better way to active to uh, initiate the project for in case of oil and gas exploration. So with this slide, I completed uh, today's presentation, today's webinar. Now, now I will hand it over the session to Divya. Over to Divya. Thanks, Chanchal. We have a few questions that have come our way, so we will be starting with those. And in the meanwhile, if anybody wants to contact uh, the hexagon team, the details are uh, displayed on your screen. Please note them down for any further communication. So the que uh, first question we have is uh, what is spatial modeling? 
yeah, spatial, uh, can I take this answer? Yeah, spatial modeling, as I told, is basically few operators are there. So you have to connect those operators to perform a certain oper operations. Like if you want to create a buffer of a particular feature. So what you have to do first, you have to take the input of that vector layers. Then you have to the, go to the buffer command. Then you have to click the buffer command. You have to set the parameters. So you have to click, click, click so many functions. Instead of that, you just define a special model where input feature will be there, buffer parameters will be there, and you have to set the output path. So just you run the process. It will ask you the which are the input feature and where to save the output. So by clicking that, you will provide the input and couple of seconds or couple of minutes, it will give you the outputs. So this is the special model and the beauty of that you can use n number of times. So this is the simple, but you can in large broader respect also you can design your special model. Uh, Chanchal, uh, okay. just I would like to add up on your uh, explanation uh, regarding special model. So special model basically is one such platform where the user can create or build their own logical operations. Supposedly, there are some, some functions, you know, which are not available in the software, in the core software, as a readily available tools. So uh, how do I how do I achieve those functions? Right. So there should be a platform where I can design my logic. But good part of that platform is that I don't need to write a code. I have some dedicated operators uh, like in our presentation that you have shown that uh, we have shown in one slide you have seen certain boxes and they are connected with certain threads black color threads so those boxes are known as the operators and threads are the connectors so as per your logical workflow you keep on connecting the operators with the threads and you can run so uh, ideally certain logic which is in the researcher's mind uh, but that logic is not readily available in the software as a ready-made tool. So to achieve that function or logic, we use the spatial modeler platform. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, thanks, Nadri. Thanks, Chanchal. The next question we have is, uh, can we prepare watershed treatment plant using GIS technology? Yes. Uh, can I answer? Yeah, please. Yeah, yes, we can we can prepare by using digital terrain model. We can prepare the uh, watershed te technology. OK, uh, so somebody wants to get in touch with Hexagon. We will share the contact details again at the end of this uh, Q&A session. Uh, the next question we have is, can we classify point cloud and imagine UAV? Basically, uh, in Imagine UAV, we process the drone data. So by using Imagine UAV, you will get the outputs in three types. So that's uh, that's what I can say. Niladri, you, if you want to add anything, you can. Can yeah. I? Uh, yeah, yeah, Niladri, yeah, can, can, you go, can you go? Can you? No, no, Krishna, if you want to take up, please go ahead, then I'll. I'll. Ah, see, if you want to classify the pine cloud data, we have to use the imagine, Adas imagine, where there is an option called pine cloud, there we can classify the pine cloud data. Diladri, uh, if you want to add anything. Yeah, yeah, perfect. OK, so the next question we have is uh, investigation climate change impact on agriculture sector over India using remote sensing applications. Basically, if we can investigate climate change impact on agriculture using remote sensing applications or not. Well, actually, uh, yeah, I would like to answer the question. Uh, recently in West Bengal, uh, there are there are several different, you know, aspects of climate changing which are happening on the agriculture. I can give an example recently in West Bengal. So what uh, our departments have measured that 
because of the climate change there is a huge lack of you know moisture soil moisture which is uh, frequently happening in the you know in in our dry seasons so uh, because of that uh, climate change aspect because of the increasing heat in the atmosphere the irrigation pattern has to get changed now there are several different type of irrigation patterns are there so in that case uh, locally people are taking out water from ground using some small pumps and also the irrigation department they are uh, you know uh, giving the required water time to time throughout the canals but ideally the somewhere we see since these are these two are not regulated uh, phenomena so sometimes we see the local farmers who are extracting more water than required and again uh, sometimes we see that since irrigation department they are routinely discharging water through canals they have discharged water in those areas where already farmers have taken out the ground water so just to regulate this uh, there is a project going on to monitor the entire irrigation system so that's a world bank project and there uh, people are using edas imagine to monitor evapotranspiration which is happening in the agricultural fields definitely not in the rainy season not in the monsoon season in the dry seasons and the taking that evapotranspiration as one of the parameter for available soil moisture so the so that the uh, the uh, 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 the water discharge by the irrigation authorities should be managed so there rapidly uh, you know the officers are using the edas imagine uh, using free satellite data uh, some somewhat they are uh, running the evapotranspiration operation using the same spatial modeler which we discussed few questions earlier and they are measuring the exact volume of water to be discharged for appropriate uh, you know soil moisture content so that's a very good example of where edas imagine is used because of the climate change effect Thanks, Miladri. The next question we have is: Can we prepare batch file for mosaicing? Well, yes. Soil parameters means what we can measure uh, in terms of that. Uh, we can measure traces of minerals. Uh, we can measure certain traces of you know uh, portions of clay and all this stuff uh, but not to a larger extent uh, yes what we can do is apart from the you know soil nutrient characteristics uh, npk what we say about very important for agriculture all these things uh, we cannot directly measure using the remote sensing or any of the satellite technologies what we can do is we can take uh, uh, lab measurements and that we can plot in our software that always we can do yes Okay, Niladi. This next question is: How can we get high-resolution TWI soil moisture data of Indian Himalayan? Uh, TWI, I think that 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 might be an index. So, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, so if that's an index, so indexing uh, index can always be generated using the uh, uh, R spatial modeler. So, various type of indexes can be built. uh on the on the based on the elevation models based on the different type of images based on their various bands and what are the next uh, part of the question divya also next part is how can we uh, find the high resolution or topographic wetness index and soil moisture data for the indian himalayan soil moisture data uh, if we talk about uh, directly the data then finding a data is not in our hand actually or not rather uh, you know belongs to our scope of work right because we don't deal with the data but if someone is using uh, like for uh, you know some uh, uh, sar data then using that we can we have a we have certain technologies called as uh, beta not images so using converting that sar data synthetic aperture radar data to a beta not file we can easily identify where are the zones of soil moisture maybe it is it might be on a hill or it might be on a te flat terrain or it might be at the bank of river that doesn't matter but we can identify using the sar data 
and obviously there are several different special modular techniques applying which we can get the uh, uh, same kind of moist zones from the optical data as well but recommended to use the SAR data for soil moisture. Oh, thanks, Nadri. We'll be taking the last uh, two questions now. So yeah. one is, do you have pre-processed images with longitudes and latitudes of different states in India that are freely available? Pre-processed, uh, no. No, we don't have. As I said, we do not deal with the images. Uh, so we do not, and mostly we work with the with our uh, client's data set. So the data that we work on, we normally work on the client's machine. So we do not hold any data at our end. Definitely there are some uh, available example data uh, on the website, Hexagon Geospatial website. So you can go and search and you can try and download the data, but that definitely won't be within the, uh, won't be confining within the Indian geographical territory. Okay, so the next question is, does GIS have any relevance in the energy sector considering the current global uh, energy crisis situation? Well, definitely, uh, yes, the answer is yes, because uh, <clears throat> mostly the global energy crisis, when we talk about that, uh, the alternate is all the kind, different kind of green energies, whatever we are uh, planning. Uh, definitely, uh, India is working on it and India is getting up to that. So when, we're, when I talk about the green energy, these energies are solar energies. These energies are wind energies. Uh, so basically, if these two and obviously tidal energy as well. So mostly in the terms of solar energy and the wind energy, where we can, you know, the, the GIS and remote sensing plays a key role for the site selection. And for, since these are the natural sources of energies, so site selection are the key factors in these two sectors. So using a digital terrain model or digital elevation model, what uh, my colleague Krishna talked about, so using that, we can really identify that how the terrain is and how the hills are and which face of the hill uh, is available towards the you know, uh, 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 flow direction of the wind. So based on that, we can place our windmills on top of those hills or hillocks or those small tillers. And obviously, uh, depending on the, there is a tool called uh, uh, a normalization tool, topographic normalization tool, we can clearly identify that what are the faces of the terrain which receives maximum amount of sunlight during the daytime. Uh, so, and maximum throughout the maximum tenure. So in that particular phase, we can, you know, lay our uh, solar panels. So that's the uh, uh, major ap primary application rather, but in a major way in the GIS, uh, in the, in the uh, energy sector. Uh, thanks, Nadri. We have a few more questions, but since our time is up, I will request the participants to reach out uh, to the email IDs that were mentioned. So we'll just go back to that slide with the contact details. And if you have any other questions, you can reach out to our Hexagon team. Um, with this, we will conclude today's webinar. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Please join me in thanking Chanshil, Shiva, and Niladri for this informative session. Please note the email ID is displayed on your screen in case you need any further information or have any more questions. We will also be sharing a recording of this session. Uh, should you wish in, uh, should you wish to listen back to this webinar? We appreciate your time and hope you have found this webinar to be a valuable experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you everyone. for joining the session. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone.